Before you start, you're going to need to collect all your materials. You'll need your embroidery pattern, some fabric, an embroidery hoop, an erasable pen, a pair of scissors, a needle and some embroidery thread. The first step is to transfer your pattern onto your fabric. To do this we're going to use an erasable pen. There are loads of different brands of these pens, all work the same. Um, basically the ink just disappears when it's when it's either under friction um, from the eraser or like heat, so from an iron or from a hairdryer. So you place your pattern underneath your fabric, line up so it's more or less in the middle, and then just draw over it. Next, you're going to hoop your fabric. So this is an embroidery hoop. You've got your outside hoop, your inside hoop, and the little toggle to tighten and loosen. To begin, you're going to take the inside hoop out. So you're going to loosen the toggle and slip it out. Place the inside hoop underneath the fabric. Line up your pattern so that it is framed by the hoop. Place your outside hoop on top and then slot it on. You want this to be nice and tight because when it pops on, you want it to pull the fabric nice and taut so that when you flick it sounds like a drum. It takes practice. Um, don't worry if you have to do this step a few times. Loosen and tighten this until you're happy with it. I'm going to start with the lighter green shade. If you measure out about an arm's worth of thread, and then if you look closely, you can see that this thread, ooh, there we go, is made up of six individual strands. Um, for the first part of this, we're going to use just two strands, so you're going to need to separate them out. We're going to do this one at a time. So pull one single strand out, holding the rest between your finger and your thumb, gently pull this one strand until it comes up. And then do the exact same thing with another strand. And then you've got your two strands you're going to place the ends of both together, hold them and then just pull them together. So you've now got a piece of thread that's two strands thick. The needle in this kit has got a lovely wide eye so it should be quite easy to thread. So pull your thread through, move this out the way. So you have your needle and you've got your thread making a U shape. I would recommend keeping one end of the thread longer than the other. This end is the one that you're going to tie a knot in and this will also be your working thread. So this will be the piece of the thread that does the embroidery. And as this gets used up, all you're going to do is gently tug on your needle and create more working thread. Keep tugging and then slowly you will run out of thread and when we run out of thread we'll tie a knot. I'll show you in practice but just to give you an idea. So keep one end longer than the other. The longer end you're going to tie a knot in. So bring the, the last couple of inches between your two fingers and then tie one single knot and then do the exact same thing in the exact same place so you've got a double knot and then again and then again and keep going until you're happy 
that the knot is big enough that it won't come through the fabric. I'm going to go for six. There we go, that's a nice big knot there. And then snip off any excess. I'm going to start with the round heads of the thistles. So we're going to use satin stitch for these. To do a nice plump satin stitch, we're going to do a border of back stitch and then fill in with satin stitch. So to start with, you're going to come up somewhere along the line around the head of the thistle, pull until your needle tugs and then create one small stitch. And then come along, I'd say that's about three millimeters along from your final stitch, from your last stitch, sorry, and create another stitch going in the same hole as the one before. We're going to keep going around the head of the thistle, doing these small stitches. Because it's a curve, you're going to need to do smaller stitches than you would if you were doing it on a straight line, just to keep that curve nice and neat. So once you've done your outline, you're going to use satin stitch as a fill stitch. So these are big long stitches that just fill in the colour. So to do that you're going to come up very, if you see very closely, we're coming up just outside of the line that we've stitched. And then you're going to go straight across in a straight line and go back in just the other side of that stitch. If you need to, to help with satin stitch, sometimes this is a useful thing to do, you can draw guidelines. You can do it with a ruler if you want to, just to make sure that all your stitches are going in the same direction and are nice and neat. So on this one, I would just do just to give me an idea of where I'm going. So you pull your thread all the way through until it tugs. And then you're gonna come back up again from this side on the other side of the back stitch. And you're gonna go back in over here. And then I'm gonna do one more stitch over here. So I'm sort of making guidelines for myself with the thread here. And then you're just going to fill in the space between. go until you're happy that you filled in enough and then pop over to the next head this thistle head and you're going to do your back stitch again and then fill and then do the same for all four two quick points to make as you're stitching if you notice that this piece of your working thread is disappearing and you're running out what you need to do is pull and you end up with more working thread be really careful not to let the shorter piece of thread get caught up I'll show you what I mean by that so here can you see the shorter pieces caught in my embroidery we don't want that because if you if you continue stitching when that happens, you'll be stitching using four strands. We only want two, so all you need to do is just pull gently. 
to free the short piece. Also another point to make, if you notice, can you see here very slightly my fabric is starting to pucker? We want to keep it nice and taut at all times, so just make sure you pull the fabric through and if you need to tighten the toggle. Um, because if you continue embroidering when your fabric is all puckered, when you finally frame your embroidery at the end and you pull it all tight, it'll be distorted. If you notice that your thread is running out, so when you've got only a few inches, what's this, like five, six inches left, the best thing to do before you totally run out is to tie a little knot and start a new piece of thread. So to do this, we're going to pass our needle underneath a stitch nearby to where our thread is coming out of the fabric. So pass your needle underneath, you're going to hold your needle with your thumb and then use your other hand. The piece of thread that's coming out of your fabric, you're going to use this, you're going to wrap it around your needle once, twice and then hold your needle in place with your thumb and pull and then do exactly the same thing in exactly the same place. So pass your needle under, hold with your thumb, thread, wrap the thread around the needle once, twice, hold it in place and pull tight. Take your needle off, put it somewhere safe and then snip off the excess. And take a new piece of thread. I've got two more strands threaded through my needle, knotted on the longer end, and keep going. So we've done all the main thistle heads, now we've just got this little thistle bud here. We're going to do the exact same method. So I'm going to do small back stitches to do a border around the bottom half of the bud. So leave the top half because that bit will do purple because that's the flower emerging. And then just use a few satin stitches to fill in the small space. And when you're happy, flip it over and using the same method as before find a stitch near to where you finished slip your needle under hold it taut with your thumb once twice pull your knot exact same thing exact same place once twice pull top and cut off the excess Next we're going to do the, um, we're going to fill in the leaves. We're going to use exactly the same as before, two strands of the lighter green with a knot. We're going to use satin stitch again but we're going to do it in a slightly different way. Um, you can use a little bit of artistic license here so depending on the direction of the stitches that you do you can create a different sort of feel with the leaf. I mean you can copy the way I do or you can um, experiment on your own and figure out the way you want to do it. The way I'm going to do it, I'm going to follow the curve of the middle of the leaf, that's where I'm going to start my stitches, and I'm going to take them to the edge of the leaf. So I'm going to start up about halfway and I'm just going to, I'm not doing an outline for this You'll notice so for the the round heads I did an outline to keep it nice and neat for the leaves which are 
more jagged. I'm gonna leave it without an outline. Also at the end I'm gonna um, outline the leaves in a different green so that'll add a bit of neatness at the end. So do your single satin stitch to the edge of the leaf and then go up a bit further up the middle of the leaf and again take your satin stitch to the edge of the leaf again same thing and then just fill in the leaf varying the length of your stitches to create the curved edges to the leaf this is what I mean by you can use artistic license you can sort of create the leaf how you want it to be And then when you're happy with how filled in that side of the leaf is, the shape of the edge, you're going to sort of curve around the top of the leaf and come down the other side. So the stitches, stitches I'm going to do at the top of the leaf are all coming from this point. Just one more I think. And then start the other side. Okay, I think I'm happy with that leaf. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing on all the other leaves. Okay, next we're going to use the slightly darker green. Can you see the comparison? Again, it's just two strands of the thread knotted at the end. We're going to use this shade of green to do um, the outline of the leaves, to do the central vein of the leaves, to do the stem of the thistle and also to do some cross hatching on the thistle itself, um, which gives the effect of what you see on a real thistle. With this sort of, it's almost got scales. Um, so for the outline of the leaf, we're going to use a back stitch. So come up at the start of the leaf and then go back down in the bottom and then keep on your back stitch. You're going to keep it as close to the satin stitches as you can and then go back in the same hole. Keep going round the leaf. On the curves, you're going to just need to use slightly shorter stitches than on the straight edges. Keep it nice and tight into the edge so you don't get a gap between your outline and your satin stitch. Okay, we've done the outline to the leaf. Next step is to do the central vein of the leaf. You should be able to follow the, the line where the satin stitches meet. So you're going to come up somewhere along that line. And again, we're just going to do back stitching. Don't go all the way to the top of the leaf, just leave a space at the top. The next step, we're going to do the stem of the thistle. So again, we're going to start with a back stitch and then we're going to whip the back stitch. So simply go up the stem, 
with your back stitch. Okay, and now we're going to whip the back stitch. So to do this, you're going to come up at the very top of the stem and then slip your needle underneath that first stitch and pull all the way through. And then from the exact same direction, so from this side still, you're going to go under the next stitch and pull it all the way through. And you can see it's starting to create a whip, so it just sort of smooths the line out a little bit. And then do the same on all the stitches in that stem. Always make sure you come from the same direction each time. Take your time, make sure your needle doesn't get caught oops, under any other stitches. So it's difficult where you're close to another leaf. So just make sure it's only the stem you're going under. And the final one. And then when you have whipped it, you pop your needle back through that first hole. There we go. And then the next thing we're going to do with this dark green is we're going to cross hatch the thistle head. So basically we're going to do diagonal lines going one way and then we're going to do diagonal lines going the other way. So start from, um, I'd say, this corner here. So this is what, the southeast of the thistle head. Start in the middle and do one line going all the way across to the other side. Okay, and then... Do another line, half a centimetre, three millimetres across. Straight line across. And then I think I'm going to get one more in there on this side. Try and keep them parallel so they're nice and straight. And then I think I can get two in here on this side. And then one on the very edge there, I think. Okay, and then we'll do the same from the other side. So start from here, go all the way across to the other side. And there you have it, sort of cross-hatch cross effect. And now I'm going to continue with this dark green and just do the outline to this leaf, this leaf to the stems and fill in the rest. And then for the final little bud here, I'm just going to do some tiny little cross-hatches. I think just two stitches in either direction, both directions, sorry, that was probably not the best grammar. And there we go. Next we've got some purple, same again, two strands, knotted at the end. Um, we're going to use single stitches to do the flower of the thistle um, and just for this tiny little bud bit here we're going to do some small, some small satin stitches. So I'll start with these, just come up halfway along and do one small stitch and I think Little knot. Sometimes you might get um, little knots like this. Usually, 
if you just pull it is pink. Um, I'm gonna bring my stitches all sort of in towards the center so it sort of has the effect of the petals of the flower are all curled in if that makes sense so we've got a little bud and then we're just going to use single long and short stitches to do the flower um, I'm going to suggest that you use the guidelines to do your first few stitches um, bring in the end of the flower can you see it's sort of inside the head of the flower the head of the thistle so it's sort of going to overlap the green so we're coming into the green so that the flower is coming out of it rather than it going from the edge we're going to come in a few millimeters you might find that it's slightly more difficult to get the needle through the fabric when there's stitches on top of it but just be gentle with it take it slowly and then when you've done I'm just going to tighten that slightly when you've done your guide stitches go for it fill it in however many you want to do until you're happy different lengths short and short and long um as long or as short as you want and when you're happy with that flower move on to the next one do the same thing again for the lettering we're going to use one strand of black thread knotted um you can you can choose not to not to include the lettering if you want you could do it in your own handwriting um you could do a quote around the edge you could print something off the computer it's up to you um so for the lettering we're going to use back stitch so that's small single stitches and just imagine that you're handwriting so the stitches are going to go in the direction as if you were writing the letters with a pen. Take your time on this. If, you, if you're if you not happy with how a letter looks, you can just unpick it and start again. For the dot on the eye, I'm just gonna do a tiny, tiny little stitch. you're not and you're done before we um, finish it off we're gonna want to iron the fabric so to do that just slightly loosen the toggle on top and slip your outer hoop off Put that to one side so we're going to iron it to get rid of can you see there's slightly some of the ink from the pen is visible so ironing it will get rid of that and also just make it nice and neat so place your inner hoop underneath make sure you're happy Let's take your time on this make sure you're really happy with the lining how it's lined up 
going to tighten that slightly. I'm going to move it slightly to the side. And if you're happy, oops, just push the hoop all the way around to make sure it's nice and straight. You want it to be flat. And then tighten, if you can, tighten the toggle as much as you can. And then the back. So there are lots of different ways of finishing off the back of a hoop. Um, if you go, if you YouTube it, if you look for YouTube tutorials, there are loads of different ways. Um, you can sew a piece of felt to the back. You can um, glue gun the edges around. You can um, do like a drawstring all the way around. Person, my personal preference, I like the back to be visible because I think, especially if you're giving it as a gift, you can see the work that's gone into it. Um, and a really simple way of doing it, how I'm going to do this one quickly, is snip the fabric all the way around as closely as you can. That way it'll lie flat against the wall. looks neat and you can also see all the work that's gone into it and there we go